joining us for this installment of A Chat with the Experts. Today, we are focusing on women's breast health as October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I am talking with two breast health experts at Wilmington Health who want to ensure women in our community are educated about breast cancer prevention and treatment. Dr. Sandra Hall is an OBGYN physician. And Dr. Bradford Tyler is a general surgeon who specializes in breast health. Dr. Hall and Dr. Tyler, thanks for joining me today. Good morning. Good morning. Dr. Hall, I'll start with you. What advice would you give to women to support them in their breast health and breast cancer prevention? Um, well, I'd back up and say this is awesome to have Breast Cancer Awareness Month in October since the mid 80s. Um, this has been one of the most effective campaigns in raising awareness. And so part of raising awareness uh, is educating men and women. So coming to our office, having us educate them about their own breast cancer awareness, breast cancer self-exam, their family history, and things that they can do diet and environment wise to affect their risk factors. That's really important. Um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month has helped really raise research money to help with causes and um, educate with prevention and treatment uh, and diagnosis and uh, having them understand why that's important and how the screening tools that we have will be effective in diagnosing their breast cancer. It, one in eight women in a lifetime will be diagnosed with breast cancer and so breast cancer touches most of us in some way. Absolutely. So on that, Dr. Tyler, about how many women are diagnosed with breast cancer each year? So in the United States, that number is roughly 280,000 women. Um, and unfortunately, in addition to that, there's about another 50,000 women that will be diagnosed with a precancer condition called DCIS. And unbeknownst to a lot of the population, somewhere around 3,500 men will be diagnosed with breast cancer every year. Wow. Well, Dr. Hall, explain to us how you support a patient and what steps you would ask that patient to take if they have an abnormal breast exam in your office. So certainly when they come see us, we take a thorough history to understand a little better about their personal risks, their family history, um, their activities, all things that can lead into breast cancer risk and help educate, like I said, um, educate them of what those risks may be, risk reducing activities like decreasing alcohol, exercise, breastfeeding if, if possible. Um, and then we talked about screening. Screen mammogram is definitely the most effective screening tool in finding breast cancer before a clinical lump can be detected. Uh, so we encourage breast cancer screening in, at the appropriate time for most individuals um, or for all individuals. Uh, the most appropriate time for most is starting at 40, but not for everyone. So understanding those risks are important. And if they have an abnormal mammogram, we, we want to remind them it's just a screening tool. And uh, if they find something abnormal on the screening mammogram, then they're asked to come back for what's called some diagnostic imaging. And it's a little bit of a misnomer because it can't diagnose breast cancer on that imaging. It just helps us decide who needs further evaluation for something that may look suspicious. Uh, and then we put them in the good hands of Dr. Tyler. And then Dr. Tyler, what steps will a patient take before seeing you if they have an abnormal mammogram? So during that diagnostic imaging, if they find an abnormality, they will determine whether that is best seen with a mammogram or whether it's best seen with an ultrasound. And then we try to get those patients in fairly quickly. My nurse will coordinate and give them instructions about potential biopsies. If they have an ultrasound guided uh, procedure, that can be done in the office the day that they see us. And we typically will have an answer for them on the pathology in 48 to 72 hours. If it happens to be a mammogram diagnosed lesion, then we will do a technique called a stereotactic biopsy, which is a computer driven needle biopsy to find that lesion. And again, gain the tissue in order to get a diagnosis. And then what are the treatment options if they do have breast cancer? 
So we bring every patient and their family in and try to discuss the options. And we've known for approximately 30 years that a mastectomy or a lumpectomy, which is just removing the cancer, are equal in their ability to treat the cancer, provided we do anything in addition afterwards that may be required, such as radiation therapy, hormone blocking pills, or even rarely chemotherapy. So we have that discussion. Most women are a candidate for either or. And then a lot of time it befalls them on their anxiety level, their family history, and even potentially if we've done genetic testing, whether they have a genetic defect that may predispose them to breast cancer. So there are a broad array of techniques that we can use in order to treat their breast cancer. And we try to coordinate that in a team effort with the patient and their family. Excellent. Well, is there anything else either of you would like to share with our viewers? I would say that um, just timely um, right now that COVID has had, has led many women to skip screening in an effort to quote unquote, play it safe. And unfortunately this can lead to delayed cancer diagnosis and unnecessary cancer deaths and more aggressive treatment. So we remind women that there, we have a really um, careful policy of masking, uh, and we can safely screen them and help find uh, early disease and lead to treatment and successful outcomes. And to dovetail off of what Dr. Hall just said, in the early 90s to early 2010, we diminished breast cancer prevalence, and that was largely due to the acceptance of screening. Now breast cancer prevalence is increasing, but that's because we are having techniques that can find breast cancers earlier, and earlier detection leads to more simplistic treatments and better outcomes. So please don't skip those mammograms and do your breast self exams. I tell all of my patients, I don't care what you find, it just has to be different from something that you felt before. Great advice. Well, thank you both so much for joining this today. And we hope for our viewers, it was very informative. At Wilmington Health, we are proud to offer an array of women's services all in our organization. That includes digital mammography with radiologists on site to readily interpret results, gynecology, urogynecology, breast surgery, primary care, and more. For more information, you can visit our website.